Everyone is everyone. On its own, this is a pretty pretentious phrase if we're being honest, but in the context of Charlie Kaufman's 2008 film Synecdoche, New York, it means everything to me. When I quietly replaced Fantastic Mr. Fox with Synecdoche, New York as being my favorite movie, I didn't expect the demand for an explanation that I got. While it was a decision that felt completely natural, it also did carry a lot of baggage. It carried an explanation I knew I'd have to soon elaborate on, not only to everyone else, but myself as well. Because everything you've heard about Synecdoche, New York is true. It's heavy and depressing, but at the same time, I found a great sense of comfort in this movie as well. A sense of comfort that's taken me weeks to confront and understand. Understanding why Synecdoche, New York is my favorite movie didn't come from a checklist or something that the film managed to check off. I'm going to do my best to explain why it's my favorite movie in this video, not necessarily tell you why it should be yours too. Charlie Kaufman made one of the most personal and honest films I've ever seen, and as a result this explanation for why it's my favorite movie will attempt to share those same qualities. I grew up in a really wholesome and supportive family. We had our ups and downs like everybody, but we never encountered any truly traumatic moments besides my sheep running away. Therefore, those were never situations I was that familiar with. Cutting to the chase, leaving out all the details out of respect for everyone involved, when I was in like the fourth grade or something, someone I vaguely knew had passed away. I really don't know this person, nor do I ever remember meeting them, but we were close enough to a point where we went to the funeral. It's something that now I would be shocked about, but would learn to cope with and move on, because, you know, people die, that's what happens. But at that age, after growing up a certain way, it was understandably kind of terrifying. Keep in mind, this was my first death. I obviously knew what death was, I watched the beginning of Finding Nemo, but seeing it happen to me this closely, looking over at the family at the funeral, to know someone was actually gone, it terrified me, and gave the concept of death a completely new meaning at that age. Like a lot of people, that fear never really went away. Once you wrap your head around the idea of death, nothing around you feels that permanent anymore. I moved on, I could function as a person, but from then on out the idea that me and everyone I loved was going to die someday lingered in the back of my mind now that it silly enough was actually a reality. It, in a sense, built up into an ongoing anxiety that I still have today and that I will elaborate on later in this video. Fast forward to middle school, and like any 13 year old discovering Odd Future for the first time, I was a real angsty piece of shit. For a lot of reasons, I didn't really have any close friends, I wasn't invited to a lot of parties, so I had a lot of time to go on the internet, be alone, get sad, all the good stuff. I moved through these years feeling pretty lost, as now I understand pretty much every middle schooler does. Fast forward to high school, and without a whole lot of friends or significant accomplishments to be proud of, and tons of questions and worries, high school understandably wasn't the best. This is when film came into the picture. Prior to this, movies had always been in my life, but never to the extent that they were about to be. Around my junior year, an acquaintance at a summer program told me to check out American Beauty. I know, right? Big high school film kid vibes. I decided to watch it one night, and my view on this medium has never really been the same since. After watching and learning a lot more, while I still think the screenplay is fantastic, I obviously don't think American Beauty is the best thing ever made, but it did introduce me to the power that this medium can hold. It made me feel a lot less alone and posed questions regarding death, depression, and legacy that felt super relevant to that time in my life. So why does this film matter to this story about Synecdoche, New York? Well, after that, I fell in love with the film and grew insanely curious as to what else the art could do. I do owe it for most of my interest in what I do now. Over the course of these last few years, I've discovered films like A Ghost Story, Enter the Void, Arrival, 2001, and Amelisa. You, you get the point. All films that, in their own ways, have addressed larger ideas regarding life and death, depression, anxiety, etc. They are all films that, regardless of any flaws they may hold, mean a lot to me, because, to be quite honest, they just make me feel special. While film helped a lot, it obviously didn't cure a lot of the anxiety and sadness I was feeling. As much as I love it and do treat it as therapy at times, it's not a true cure. Life got a lot better, but as I've experienced more, gotten older, and as that safety net has shrunk, I've occasionally slipped back into these phases of sadness and anxiety, as most people do, now at a much stronger level thanks to homesickness. So, in an attempt to overcome this and find something to distract me, I decided to study abroad in Paris for a quarter. I promise this matters in the grand scheme of this video. As a lot of you could probably tell from excessive social media posts, vlogs, and even letterbox reviews, it was a blast and definitely helped me grow a bit as a person, especially with the whole homesick thing. But when I got home from the trip, things were not only unexpectedly weird, but they also got kind of scary. I wasn't anxious from missing Paris, I was anxious at the fact that in a few months I would start my last year of school, and things were about to get very serious, and that freedom I had just experienced for the last three months was in the past. It was as if all the progress made on this trip went away immediately, which was a problem in itself. Paris was supposed to fix things, it was supposed to act as a buffer, why didn't it fix things, why are things suddenly so much worse? And that's when, out of nowhere, at 10am I decided, you know what, I'm gonna watch Synecdoche, New York. It really wasn't because I thought it'd help, I didn't even know what I was doing, I was still a little jet lagged. 
I really don't know why I decided to watch it at this time. If you were hoping to gain a better understanding of this film through this video, I don't know, you might get something, but that's not at all my purpose behind this. There are countless essayists and film critics who have done an amazing job at picking apart this film and trying to find its meaning. As I mentioned earlier, my goal is to look at it from a more personal standpoint, something I don't usually do on this channel, but something I felt this film deserved. Because although it's only been a few months, I've spent a lot of time thinking about Synecdoche, New York and trying to figure it out. And I don't even feel like I've scratched the surface of what it means. I mean, when I initially watched it, part of me was like, I didn't understand any of that. But another part of me was like, yes, exactly. Besides, maybe I'm not supposed to understand it all at this time in my life. For fun, I decided to take a gander at the Google synopsis as a way of sort of explaining what this film is about to you guys. It essentially boils down to Caden leaves his home in Synecdoche, New York and heads to New York City where he gathers a cast of actors and tells them to live their lives within the constructs of a mock-up of the city. Yes, that is the description for what this film is on its surface, but anyone who has seen the film knows that it is pretty much only 1% of what this film is actually about. I guess my best way of coming up with a true synopsis for this film is that it's a film about a person having an existential crisis for their entire life. Not a lot to argue with there, although I'm sure tons of fans could find a way to disagree. But moving back to how this relates to me, as I mentioned, death has always been something that has terrified me and still does. If you've seen the movie, you know that death is one of the bigger themes going on here. To a certain extent, I'd say just the existence of death has ruled how I choose to live my life. To me, I've always looked at it as a time limit, and before it hits, I have to find out how to live the most purposeful and satisfying life possible before it ended. And the best part about it all is that you don't know when it's going to end. There's an overwhelming fear that comes with any time I zoom out and think about what happens after that time limit, pondering what difference I made, freaking out over what happens after I die. In hopes of maybe finding satisfaction in this and making myself feel a little bit more secure, I was like, oh, I should go into filmmaking because the people who made the films that directly made an impact on my life can say they had a purpose because they did something important to someone. These are ideas, panicked thoughts, and approaches that Synecdoche, New York directly addresses. Caden wants to do something significant, create something big and tough and meaningful. Theater is to him what film is to me in a sense. Now I'm not saying I wanted to make something as ambitious as Caden, I made Pine, how could I take myself that seriously? But I do see his intentions in this film, he wants to make a difference, that's basically it. He wants to feel like when he dies, for years after he dies, he has something that he did for the world that touched people. And I, as cheesy as this sounds, want to do the same in some shape or form. I'm not there yet, but maybe someday I will. The important thing to note though is something that we learn as we progress through the film is that this goal can't necessarily be accomplished, at least to the degree that he wants to make it happen. He does make something big, at least we think, but it's clear he's never actually satisfied with it. They never get an audience, it never feels finished, it's not what he wants. And to me, this is one of the most important and impactful aspects about this film. While so many films strive to find purpose and tell the audience to find purpose and opens them up to discussions, Synecdoche New York is the first film I've seen to look at the direct impact these philosophies have on a person. As I mentioned earlier, the films I was familiar with that asked bigger questions always had a certain sense of self-importance about them. While sure they introduced me to ways of thinking that have changed me as a person, they never felt like they reached the level of honesty that Synecdoche New York brought to the table. This directly leads into what I believe is another element of the film that holds the same level of significance. There's a specific scene near the end of the film where Caden limps through the streets of his own world, his own city. That world is falling apart, the people around him are dying, it's as if the world is ending in the same way Caden's life is. While there are tons of theories, this read to me as what his actual life looks like at this time. We're near the end of his life and the people and places around Caden that had no significance to him anymore more and the things that played no purpose in his life are completely gone. To put this in simpler terms, if I'm about to die and I'm not thinking about, you know, Pop-Tarts, in my own world, Pop-Tarts don't exist, you know? It's the film's way of narrowing down what made his life what it was, who made an impact, and who mattered. We all meet a lot of people in our lives, but it's the people we think about right before we die, the people who we might not even know matter that much to us that in fact mean the opposite in that moment. At least that's what I'm assuming. I haven't died yet, I wouldn't know. But this is an idea that I've been thinking about a lot recently. We can live a full life, but at the end of the day, what percentage of that giant period of time boils down to meaning anything? With the city falling apart, it's clear this huge project that was supposed to serve this purpose didn't do that for Caden. If this project was something that he did love and gave him some sort of satisfaction, it would bring that same level of comfort that this woman brings to him. This is what I love about this film. It's about more than just Caden. It's about the people in his life and the things that he loved. While it does feel extremely personal, it doesn't feel like Charlie Kaufman is approaching this from a singular standpoint. He seems like he's approaching this from everyone around him. Caden didn't die with the structure he built in prime condition because that wasn't something that at the end of the day made the same impact as his actions towards those around him did. This is literally the hardest thing to explain, Jesus Christ. Basically, I get overwhelmed at the idea of purpose and legacy and death and everything I've been talking about in this video. 
They all feel like subjects that I am constantly thinking about and trying to figure out, but at the same time feel like subjects I have no grasp on whatsoever. It's a cycle that's turned me into a very self-centered person at the end of the day. Take that and add a job that involves literally thousands of people watching what you have to say every week, and it kind of gives you an ego. An ego that no film has directly addressed in such a powerful way like Synecdoche, New York. Ego is something that nobody can avoid, but something that can become pretty toxic if it gets out of control. For whatever reason, I've had a large ego since high school, so building an audience and having people that are technically fans kind of made things a bit intense, especially when that mixed with my anxiety and a lot of the existential shit I was talking about earlier. As I've become a bit more aware of this ego, I've tried to reduce it through meditation and exercise and basically anything that seemed like it would help in some way. Generic things that made me feel a bit more human because after living online for so long, you, you kind of need something to remind you of that. I made some progress, but again, for the most part, everything I ever thought about had to do with myself. Self-care is great, yes, but when the only things you care about revolve around yourself, that's a problem. Throughout the next year, thanks to this self-centeredness, I slipped out of friendships, went through multiple rocky relationships, and basically found myself in a place where all I was ever thinking about was myself and it made life kind of scary. Writing this out, I'm realizing, man, I really should get some therapy. Don't get me wrong, I'm not an emotionless piece of shit. I do care about my family and my friends. I love them. I just found myself prioritizing myself a bit too much. I also don't want this to feel like, please feel bad for me. I understand this is not at all dramatic compared to a lot of what other people go through. I obviously know that other people in the world exist and have their own lives and problems and whatnot, but when you think about yourself and your own purpose so much and put yourself in this authoritative position every week, you start to forget the communal aspect of living that makes life a bit less terrifying. An aspect of life that Synecdoche, New York reminded me exists. So embarrassingly enough, yes, it took a movie to change these things for me. Synecdoche, New York, in ways I cannot describe, reminded me that there are other people in the world battling these same fears, overwhelmed by these same thoughts. Everyone is Everyone is a line in this film that, as I said before, genuinely meant a lot to me. While the fact that I'm going to die disappointed and unfulfilled terrifies me no matter how much I accomplish, that is literally going to happen to everyone else. As an example, I may not have the work under my belt that Charlie Kaufman does, obviously, but Charlie and I will both die and with time both be forgotten and never be thought of again. Synecdoche, New York essentially boiled down to a film about death and existence that was kind of laughing in our faces about the subject. It's saying yes, these are huge topics, but at a certain point you can't figure out everything completely. It's not understanding these broad concepts or understanding yourself that brings satisfaction because you are always changing and the world is always changing and these are topics we can't control. It's being there for the people around you and understanding the perspectives of others that really brings a sense of satisfaction and purpose at the end of the day. Synecdoche New York didn't solve my anxiety completely, that's still something I'm figuring out, but it did help me breathe a bit more and look at those around me a bit differently. As much as it helps to have a film that reminds you that you're special, it's important to have a film that does the complete opposite. As I mentioned earlier, at the time of writing this, I'll be entering my last year of film school. While that is terrifying, I feel a little better about it now. You know, when you talk about film every week and think about it every day, it becomes a bit of a roller coaster of emotions. At times it does feel like everything to me and something that I'm extremely grateful for. Just look at the channel I made out of it. It's really changed my life. But other times it does feel repetitive. It pisses me off. It feels like it's all about the money. I do hate the film industry sometimes. But Synecdoche, New York reminded me how much I love filmmaking. It proved this medium's magic in a way that no film has ever before. To put it simply, it was a hug I didn't know I needed. A hug that I couldn't have gotten through anything but film. Writing this video was weird. It got a lot more personal than I thought it'd get, but this felt like a film that deserved that. I also figured that if a film like this can strip away and be honest like that and have an impact, I might as well do my best to do the same in my video to a certain extent. My point is, if you feel like you get anxious or sad or scared about life, death, etc. like I did, I hope this video helped in some way, shape, or form, and I hope you find a film that does the same for you. So, I guess with all that being said, thanks for sticking around, thanks for watching, and most importantly, Thank you, Charlie Kaufman. You made a difference. So rather than being up here pretending I'm an expert or presenting myself in a way that will reinforce the odd ritualized lecturer, luxury model, I'm just telling you off the bat that I don't know anything. <laughs>